Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining our webinar for Essential Elements Music Class. For those that are live, we appreciate taking your time this evening. For those that are watching the recording, we appreciate you watching that. We are excited to have my dear friend back, Shauna Longo. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for having me, John. So excited to be here. Oh, we're so excited. So wow, that's a lot of excitement. A lot of excitement for a Thursday night, folks. Um, <laughs> If you notice, both Shauna and I look slightly different. No more platinum hair. I'm going full mountain man over here with the the beard. You know, COVID changes you, right? It totally does. <laughs> um, all right. So enough of enough of that. Um, if you ever get to come to a conference and see us present together live, it is a hoot, as they say. Um, as my West Virginia grandma always said, it's a hoot. <laughs> um, so tonight, really the focus of the reason we're putting together these webinars is we're trying to serve the needs of all the EE Music Class subscribers. And one of the biggest needs we hear now is, you know, I have all of these resources, I have these songs, and I have um, various, you know, um, interactive pages and less and um, the listening maps and all these other pieces. And and how do I like how do I get ready for the rest of the year and how do I organize all these materials? And Sean and I were kind of talking, and Sean obviously, of course, has a million ideas of how to use this. So this presentation is one of those where we're gonna throw out a million ideas because we know that everyone has a slightly different teaching situation, and then we have the hybrid in person, online, constantly changing. So we want to give you as many ways to use your playlist and class collections, as many ideas for how to put content in it, whether it's monthly or by theme or by musical concept or whatever it is. We're just gonna throw all these out there because we want you to be able to leave this and have a really good foundation of setting up your EMC account for the rest of the year for success and whatever the rest of the year means, not the rest of the 20, the academic year, all the way through May or June, right? So that's the focus tonight. We're gonna dump, jump right in. It's gonna be all about playlist and class collections and how to pull in all the amazing resources to set yourself up for success. Obviously remembering that playlist and class collections can be shared with your students uh, for online learning. So with that, I'm gonna go off can camera, let Shauna take the whole thing from here but I will be here. I'll be um, following your questions. So if you have any questions during, you can send them. Um, we have amazing team members from Hal Leonard that support EMC. Chris and Stephanie are here. So they will be able to answer your questions um, as well. So feel free to, to ask about anything. And if I get a really good question, I will interrupt you, Shauna, and let you answer it as well. So uh, thank you so much and enjoy the ride. Here we go. Yeah, let's get started, everybody. Um, I'm really excited to be here. and. I'm going to give you ideas for K through five. And of course, everything I'm going to talk about is really um, don't think of it so narrow that even when I'm talking about K to two, if you're not K to two, um, there still might be an idea you didn't think about of how to um, organize or how to utilize or how to structure things or what you can do um, with it. So I'm going to jump right in and we're going to go to browse to my playlists and you're going to see I have a lot of playlists. OK. Um, and so, you know, everybody's got the my favorites, but then <clears throat> I've got even more. I mean, right now, I even, right now, <laughs> I have a 2020 staff holiday song because we decided literally yesterday that for my virtual holiday concert, we're going to end it with a bang with a staff song. Um, so I put in the assets for the songs that the teachers need to learn and shared it with them you'll see that the playlist is shared and they can be off and learning the songs and they love that the lyrics would be on the screen and they can follow along because they don't necessarily read music um so you know this has literally one th two two things in it it's the same thing just two different versions um but you, you can think of playlists that way in terms of how you want to um utilize them you know i have one here that just has one song because they want to play we want to use this on the announcements friday um, tomorrow, oh, that's tomorrow actually, um, for Halloween as like a fun little song for the kids to sing during the announcement. So we've been working on that. So I said, here, I shared this playlist with just this one song that it could be inserted into, um, the virtual announcements that we do. Um, and then of course there's like, I, I'm already planning next year's holiday concert because I find songs I like and kind of, you know, so I, I'm definitely a planner. Um, you know, but when when I think about these playlists, like right now, I've got two Halloween ones. I've got 
all the way down here, sorry, my Halloween list, okay, which will include all of the assets for every song. Um, but then what I did was I made one Halloween for kids. So that's my cue that that's my one that I shared with my kiddos. Um, I, it, you'll see playlist is shared. This is all of the songs we've kind of done throughout the past month in class. And I pushed it out via their Google Classrooms under the, my music um, lessons. And they can now at home, I'm, I'm fortunate that I see my kids live and I've got some kids at home that I stream live to. Um, but at their leisure, I shared this Halloween list so they could be doing the songs at home and they get really excited about it. And you know what, if it gives them a reason to sing outside of my music class, then I'm super happy. Um, so in here, I didn't add all the assets. I just went and found, like I just wanted Boo with, I just wanted the lyrics. That's all I wanted for my kiddos was the lyric videos for them. Um, so it would mirror what they saw in class. Uh, so you can pick one specific asset and I'll talk about that when we get there. But so it could be, you could do this. You'll, you've seen, I did it by holidays. You know, I've got, um, what else do I have in here? I know I've got Christmas songs. I've got Thanksgiving. I've got by concerts. I've got Christmas concert last year, my spring concert, which these are null and void because it didn't even happen. So maybe I'll just change that to 2021. Um, you know, I could do that. I could press manage and I could totally um, edit the name of that list. If I playlist, if I decide I want to change the name of it um, because we didn't get to do that concert. Um, but the other way to think about this, and this is how my, my heart and soul of the way I teach general music is I have it by unit. So I took my curriculum, which I was fortunate enough to redo this summer. And we really have six, we have the year broken down into six units. And then throughout those units run a couple of themes like um, instruments, vocals, um, culture, and um, you know, like music history should run through all six units. Um, but here's how they're broken down. And we actually made this K through eight. This is the structure of our general music K to eight vertically aligned, is that our first unit is beat and rhythm, second is meter, third is pitch, Fourth unit is timbre, fifth is form, sixth of this is expressive elements. So then what I do is I go in and search and as I find things and I'm looking at songs and, and listen, spend the time, it's well worth it. I can then add them. Now I might add a specific asset or the whole collection depending how I wanna do it. But as I find things, I'm like, oh, that would be great for my beat and rhythm unit. And I throw them all in here, everything. There's PDFs, so activity pages that I can put, I could put in the kids' Google Classrooms. Um, you know, I could easily print this, scan it, and throw it in their Google Classroom, or make it a JPEG and put it in a Google slide um, and make it an interactive um, worksheet that they could type right in it. You know, they could type right in these boxes instead of having to print it and um, and write on it. Um, like for, let's find, like, this is a really good example of that for the pies, pies. Like I could easily make this a fun, it's going to load eventually fun, interactive, um, worksheet for them. You know, maybe I like put a number one, two, three, four, five or something, and they roll dice and they, they have to create rhythms or something like that. Um, something fun, or they just create their own rhythm using these Apple for, you know, TT or, or whatever. Um, so the sky's the limit on how you can take these student pages and, you know, maybe you can't have them printed or you can't have the kids print, but you could easily still share them and have the kids do things with them in whether they're live or at, um, at home, however it might be. Um, so that's like one idea with that. So there's tons of activity pages I have here. And it's just my way is, as I'm searching, I want to know which unit I'm going to put those songs in. So like meter, I've got these songs. Um, I have to go back and add some more um, of the listening maps and things. It's still a work in progress because I'm just getting to my second unit. It's been a crazy year. Um, but you know, Shake It is in here for pitch. It was also in beat and rhythm. You can add songs in multiple playlists. That's super easy. Um, so I, I like to do it that way personally. Then if I have a sub, um, if I'm, I actually have a playlist that is, um, or I used to, maybe I got rid of it. 
up oh, here we go emergency sub plans no this is my um sub plans right now that if there's an emergency and i'm not in school and this has 12 songs which my classes right now are 25 minutes long this gives that sub more than enough content to fill a class period get the kids up get them moving get them i'm grateful we're allowed to sing with masks on the kids are socially distanced at least six feet apart we can sing inside with masks safely um and so this at least gives that sub something active to do with the kids so that's another um great way to kind of planning out your year you need to have sub plans because at some point in time everybody gets sick in some capacity um so and i can change this playlist i can add items i can get rid of items as the year evolves the playlist is shared okay it's already got the code is embedded in my sub plans as i change it here that code doesn't change so the code stays the same no matter what the sub is if i'm no oh tomorrow and i'm like ah oh, i want to add in we just we're doing halloween i could throw some songs in here get rid of others and that sub that link that they're going to use to get to this doesn't change but i have the power to adjust it as i want to um, for that so that's another idea so we've talked about by concept by kind of like those overarching concepts we've talked about by holiday or theme another one is you might want to do like a patriotic um playlist i don't know if i have that if i started that i was thinking about it the other day no i didn't do it yet um, I'm gonna add a patriotic songs playlist. There's tons of patriotic ones in here. And actually that's an EEMC collection. If you go down here, they call it president, um, they call it President's Day. But here's all of these songs that are all about kind of patriotic music. So that's a great, <clears throat> great idea that you could add. Even if your school does morning announcements, you could have them do the Pledge of Allegiance and Star Spangled Banner. Here is a recording that they could utilize with that. So if I open that up, here you go. They could add the lyrics video that the kids could see the Pledge of Allegiance across the screen. Um, so that could be a really great little thing, little bonus that I'm talking about. I'm gonna go back to my playlist. Um, you could also do it by months. Maybe you wanna make a playlist, add a new playlist. It's September, then October, November, and then you can curate it any way you wanna curate it. So that's totally up to you how you structurally want to organize it, but it's a great idea to do it by the months of the year. Um, if you want to do it, if that's the way your brain kind of works. So that's the way maybe you're apt to structure your curriculum and your lesson plans or, or however, however you have to make it, make it easy for you to use. Um, oh, you could also structure it as a lesson. Like here I've got grade, 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 grade three to five rhythm. And maybe that's, maybe it's one lesson plan of what I'm going to do with the kids. For instance, I will show you one. Um, I have the, where do I have it? Um, I did, we did Worldwide Day of Gratitude, okay? So Lean On Me, there were actually um, two versions of it, um, but maybe this is for the Worldwide Day of Gratitude lesson plan. That was the one um, version I wanted the kids to focus on. So that was the asset I put in there, but you can call it lesson plan one or whatever it is. Maybe you want to do a special patriotic lesson plan and there's tons of stuff you can pull in for that in different capacities. All right, so the next thing, so that's kind of like many different ways you can effectively use those playlists. There's also my class collections. So um, you'll see here, I've got in my, I wanted to have all of my concert materials from last year in one place. So that if I, so I pulled in the three playlists from last year's um, Christmas concert. And then my, I broke, I ended up breaking mine down by grade level because I found that I could share them easier. So I could share this playlist with um, the teachers and during like breaks in the day when the kids are having snack or something, the teachers would put the, um, my music for my upcoming concert up on the screen and the kids get another chance to kind of hear it um, and work on their concert music. But I didn't want the kindergartners having access to first grade songs and the teachers like playing the wrong song or something like that. Um, so the more specific you can make it, I think is some definitely effective when you're sharing things. Um, you know, I've got one for first grade. I've got some, some ideas in here of what I could do with them. I had a student, uh, I've got substitute music teacher. I wanted to share that, that um, class with them. And here was, you know, I pulled in the kindergarten kids spring concert 
um, because that had all the kids versions and then I could have put the first grade one in and it um, it is shared and then I shared it out in the spring with the sub and then they had okay kindergarten I want you to do these songs first grade I want you to be doing these songs during class um, and it made it super easy and then I also threw in a lesson in there that I wanted them you know to work on or something like that um, and then I had a student while we were shut down I made a recorder class if you teach recorder you can you can create one of those um, and I had a he's now a first grader, so kindergartner, got a recorder, and he's like, can you help me learn? So I shared a playlist of the recorder book with him, um, and he went off, and every time I saw him, he'd play me a new song, um, and it was awesome. It was like a little independent study of the recorder. Um, so, you know, as a lesson within any of these, so you could do these class collections, so you've seen by grade level, you know, here's my grade one, kindergarten, you could do it by unit themes. Maybe you do a recorder unit. Maybe you do a ukulele unit. Maybe you do a world music unit. You could have that. Um, you know, the sky's the limit in what you call them. You know, uh, within these playlists, you know, you can add songs, teaching plans, PDFs, listening maps, all kinds of things. And I'm going to show you examples of that. So let's dig in and see a, a sample. Um, that I did. So for K to two, my sample is going to be uh, rhythm and beat. So I kind of showed it to you here. So you'll notice I've included all of these songs. These are all songs. Charlie over the ocean. Bow wow wow is great. I'm also going to then revisit that in pitch. Um, I like to go from the known, focused on the rhythm, to then they already know the pitch and now talk about that pitch um, in the next unit. Some great songs, I Got the Beat, Bernie B, we all know that um, that one, uh, hopefully you know that one. You know, Shake It, Engine Engine Number Nine, that's another one I'll probably revisit and pitch. Um, my kids love Steady Eddie. If you haven't seen Steady Eddie, I highly recommend that one. It's a really cute um, song for the kiddos. Uh, I'll show it to you. It's, it's, really, it's really cute, it's adorable. Um, and so what this shows is here's the lyrics, but then it shows at parts they play. So you can have them playing any instruments. So they're playing along with Ode to Joy. Here they're playing long, short, short with Billy Boy and then short, short, long with this old man. It just breaks into these other songs in the middle of it. Um, and it's really, really fun. They like it. It's got a good little rhythm to it. Um, Apple Tree, many of us do that song. And then you've got all of these PDFs that I use to pull that in as well. Um, so another one is this, um, I like this, this one, mixing the sounds together. So for this, you know, they can color the bar lines with a crayon, clap and say ta for each beat, um, nod your head once for each beat, tap your toe. So this gives them ideas that you could easily assign this um, in class, virtually, whatever capacity. Um, you could use this as an assessment to be able to gather some data on your students and how they're doing. Um, it gives some definitions uh, and so on. And then there, watch the answer key. Don't just assign it and let them have the answer key, okay? Um, and then there's coloring time. So it's really, really great for that age, age group, okay? Um, so I use this and as I go through, now, for me personally, this isn't my full lesson. This is not one lesson for me. This is a couple of weeks. This is actually over 10, um, 10 lessons that I cover all of these songs and, and the PDFs, okay? Now, I could I manage the list, okay? When I go in to manage the list, that allows me to change the order of things. So, like, I actually didn't do this here. I'm going to grab it, and I'm going to bring it down here. Um, you know, this... This one I did up here, so I'm gonna move it up. And now I've got the order that I present it um, because we all know that many of us pull from different resources. Um, I pull in from all over the place. This is really my, this can be the heart of what you do. Um, and then you pull in little things, but by having it organized by concept, I know and putting them in the order I'm going to um, cover them. If I want it, if I've got an extra three minutes and I'm like, ah, oh, let's go back and do Mickey Mouse March, yay! Or I'll, I might give the students a choice. Hey guys, what song, we have two minutes, what song do you wanna do? And I'll let them pick, sorry, I'm gonna go back to that. I'm gonna let them pick one of the songs they've already done, 
there it's right here it's already in that playlist that i don't have to go fumbling and searching for it if i've got two minutes songs are about two minutes and they say i had a student today that was like we're doing hollow it was our halloween extravaganza dance party and he wanted engine engine number nine so i just scrolled up bam opened it up and we were off and running with engine engine number nine because he got to pick and choose what a song to do um so that's what's really really great about it is that when you think about it by unit um you can kind of have some variety and you have that flexibility to pull things in the spare of the moment or maybe you know you realize they're really having trouble with something and you want to you want to kind of scale back and review to kind of build back up or something like that um so i really love that aspect of it all right let's i made a sample grades three to five let's check that one out because this one is pretty pretty cool so in here you'll see i've got interactives i've got pdfs i've got songs i've got books i've got lesson steps holy cow there is a ton of stuff. Let's kind of dig in. So I made this for rhythm, teaching rhythm. And again, this would be done over a, a variety of days, okay? Is it completely complete? No, I pulled in two songs. I would probably, I would definitely have more than that. But I wanna show you these interactives because I got really excited about these. Um, and so watch this. We could do this as a class. They have to figure out early in the, what is that rhythm? Pull in the 16th notes, drag it and put it up oh, and drag it in. Morning at, what would that be? Oh, oh, I think I was, morning at, here we go, eight o'clock. Okay, so you can, they can pull in these rhythms and then check, let's check. Yay, I got those both right, amazing. Okay, they could retry if they've missed, it'll give them feedback. So you could share this with them in a playlist. The kids could do it. You could have them take a screenshot of it and send it to you when it's complete, showing it done, that it's finished. You could also, uh, maybe you just share this in a single playlist because you don't want, maybe you add some songs. It's totally up to you. But you could have them take a screenshot. You could have them, um, go into Flipgrid and hold up their screen and show it to you and just record themselves, you know, then performing it um, and, and hold it up to the screen and show you that they did it right. You know, you can have them turn it in a multitude of ways. That's totally up to you. But I love these interactives. There's a rhythm word search, which I think is totally fun. So here's quarter, find the words from the grid. Look at this, I'm just clicking and dragging, waltz and it checks it off as I find these words. Oh, here's beat. Okay, hole. They're like jumping out at me right now. It's going crazy. Um, oh, I just found syncopation jumped out and rest. Um, and then tempo jumps out at me. So these are great to assign your kids as something to do check. And it tells how much time was spent. Do you see that timestamp? So you can make it a game for them. How fast can you find all of them and tell them to, again, somehow send you a screenshot or flip grid it or whatever. Um, and then you can ha see who can do it the quickest and, and it's, it's time stamped. So that is really, that's really awesome. Little inter I love these interactive things. Sorry. Um, uh, music and math. A lot of times we need to teach across contents. I love to teach across contents. So here you've got a little music and math worksheet with the answer key. Don't give them the answer key cause they'll just cheat. Um, but you know, you could easily take a screenshot of this, put it into a Google slide and have the kids write right on that or um, print it out or however you want to assign it to them. Um, but these are all PDFs, practice writing notes. Now for that, you're going to need probably to print that out so the kids practice writing them, but it, it gives them directions for how to practice writing the notes on the line with examples, um, with exercises and all of that. This could be great for sub plans with the answers there in case the sub doesn't know the answers, which absolutely happens, okay? So I added in all these PDFs. I love the state, the states, because I know in second grade, third grade, they work on the states. So here is rhythms, and then they have to find the city and state. So L, that is Austin, Texas, is T, 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 T. So you could totally have them like create a fun rhythm-based, pulling in their states um, song 
by putting an order to the answers um, and then writing that into a little song where they say them or something like that. And then maybe you say, pick, find five other states and their capitals, and I want you to write out their rhythms and turn them into a song. So now you're not only, you're not only taking what's here, the examples, and then working through it, now you have to extend and deepen that learner and raising the cognitive demand level on them by having them have to figure out the rhythms for one, find other states' names, and what's the rhythm of that name, find um, the capital of that state, what is that rhythm, put it together, and then like create a little song out of it. That sounds like such fun to me. Um, and it'll get the kids interested in learning their states. Uh, syncopation, all kinds of things. Okay, so then I pulled cats and dogs because this had some great lyrics. It has a notation. If you aren't aware, the music notation is going to have the music on the screen and the line moves along while you see the music um, and the lyrics at the same time. Sorry, my Wi-Fi is slow tonight. Um, so that's what those are. Hopefully it comes up any moment now. I'll give a little pause. So I like that we can see the rhythm. The X is telling them when to clap. We can see when to sing, okay? Um, when it says lyrics, you're just gonna see the lyrics to the song only, which is great for the, the younger kids for sure. Um, so that is that. Then you've got the accompaniment demo, okay. I've got Frog in the Middle. Then I pulled in Rhythm Cups book. So I'm gonna open up that, and I love that this gives us um, the book. Now, you can't assign like one song within the book. You can only assign the whole book. But what I love is, why not assign this book to the kids and say, you pick one of the songs, get out your cups, perform it, record yourself doing it in Flipgrid. That would be awesome. That'd be like so great. What an authentic way to give an assessment. What a great way to give the kids some choice. Does it really matter which of the songs? Or maybe you say, you have a choice you can either do, can't stop the feeling, or best day of my life. You give them the choice. There's demo audio, there's accompaniment only. Maybe you say, I want you to perform with the accompaniment audio only. You'll be able to tell which one they play and perform in front of. Um, so, I mean, it's it's great. It tells them the directions, they learn it, they record themselves in flip paper or something, doing it for you, and done. That's a great music lesson, and you've given them a little bit of choice. So I included that book in here because, you know, many teachers are like, why would I include an entire book? Well, give them some choices or put the book in there and tell them a specific song, go to this page and you need to learn this. Um, so you can guide them to that. I put peanut butter jam. That's another really great one with some great rhythms um, that I would include for this. Uh, I really liked where is it? Um, rock out. Looks like it was so much fun with a drum ensemble. Um, so maybe you have like a couple kids meet up on Google Meet and each one plays a different part. You know, you could do that live teaching virtually. Have assigned different kids different parts um, and have them do the song together. This even has um, guitar parts you could add in, all kinds of things. So, I mean, the possibilities are endless on how you could use this. Then I added in here, it says lesson step, but this is actually a listening map. So Mambo from West Side Story. So it's gonna take me directly to that listening map. You could share this, play, and here's play along rhythms again. You know, you could have them each record, you could edit it in and create a little virtual concert of your kids doing this song. Um, so it really gives you lots of options for what you wanna add to these playlists. And then I, it's shared. So here's that link, I copy it, I send it off to my kiddos. You know, maybe you send them the link for the unit and you're like, today we're gonna do number seven and number nine. That's what you're gonna focus on. And then they have to go to step seven, step nine, we're gonna do that activity, we're gonna do this song. You're gonna pick a song from Peanut Butter Jam and I want you to do the Mambo, you know, you can give them steps within that playlist of what they need to do that day, um, which is another great idea of how you could do it. Then, uh, what else can we pull in? Well, I decided, I loved that the recorder book, the recorder um, lessons includes rhythms. So I wanted my kids clapping and tapping rhythms. This will let them hear it, have them do it themselves, 
Again, they could record themselves reading the rhythm and clapping it. So this comes from the recorder book, but this works great even if I don't have recorders in their hands, just working on some rhythms. So I put two of those in there that I thought would be really good for those kids to work on with different note values. Ooh, that was a lot. That was a whole lot. John, do we have any questions? I, we've been answering them. Oh, we've good. been rocking and rolling on the questions. I would say we've had a couple of questions on just um, just reminding how all the sharing works. I think it'd be really cool right now to why don't we go through and show an example of making a playlist kind of similar to what you already have there, but let's just do it from yep. scratch. And I think a lot of folks want to see that. Let's go in and search for a teaching plan yep. because I think one of the things that we see is there's an enormous amount of resources here from listening maps to other resources. I love that you found something in the recorder method that supports rhythm in another really authentic way. Um, so why don't we go through and pull a pull a sample out um, and, and yeah, let's just build it. one of these slowly from scratch and let people kind of watch the, the thinking here. My process, hold on for dear life folks, okay? Um, all right, so the first thing I'm gonna do if I know what I want this to be. So, and again, this is blind. I do not have, I did not pre-research this. Um, this is, I'm going blind here. So you're really kind of getting into the mind of Shauna Longo. I'm gonna add a new playlist. Now, let's say I <clears throat> didn't start out here in playlists you can always, when you as soon as you find an asset that you want to add, it will give you the option. Um, let's make this grade three to five, and I'm going to make the unit pitch, and I'm going to create it. So I like to start there because I know what I'm looking for. Like when I started this summer, um, like reorganizing my stuff, I knew what I wanted those playlists to be. Okay, so now I have it in here, and it's got nothing. So let's go browse. Um, Let's start with some, so here's where I go to browse and there's all of these options. Let's start with interactives, okay? Um, so I'm gonna go to browse interactives and this is gonna give me all of the options for the interactive materials. That's that like drag and drop and things like that. Um, so I'm gonna, we're doing pitch for third to fifth grade. Ah, here's a great one on high dough. So I like it, you, I can open it up what is it let's look oh they can put them in order the solfege great love it i'm going to add that to mine okay so if you hit the heart that's going to add it to your favorites and your favorites playlist will get very long i'm going to click the plus and then here i'm going to drop down and if i hadn't already added that playlist you can add a new playlist and enter the name Okay, and then hit create. So don't feel like you have to have it up first, but we're gonna do grade three to five pitch, add it to the playlist. So I'm gonna add that high dough. I wanted that interactive into that. Okay, so that's the one I found for that on interactives. So then I'm gonna go, um, let's see if there's any PDFs I might wanna add to that lesson. These are again, those, it's gonna pull in any PDFs that are in. Now you'll see there are 759 items. So maybe I wanna add um, a grade range, right? Three plus, now I'm down to 30 items. So it's a little bit more manageable um, for how you might do it. So here's a find the music alphabet with a color in the letters. Maybe I'd like that. I could, I'm gonna put it in there because listen, here's my feelings. Add as much as you find. You can always delete it from the playlist or move it around later. Um, but I like to just not forget about stuff. So I try as I find stuff to put it in. Um, let's see, what is Tweeter's tune? Let's look at that. See if that's something we might want for grade three to five pitch um, lesson. Oh well, yeah, absolutely. C major scale. Go ahead, well, John. Uh, little hamster in your wheel in your head is running like crazy. I One thing I just want to point out is I love watching your process. And one of the takeaways that I'm having right now is that you've organized your playlists categorically ahead of time. So it's given you the ability to go through the content and just look at things and start pulling out pieces. Oh, three through five, this. Oh, this is for K. I might use this in two places. And like you said, just add it to all the places you want and you can always remove it later. But from just a planning the rest of your year approach, I love the concept 
of create all the playlist and class collections categorically that you want so you can browse through all the content and just pull and add as needed. But that yes. organized step of having those playlists ready to go, I think is key here. It is, it totally is. If you can think through, I'm gonna need stuff for President's Day, I'm gonna need stuff for this. So you're not constantly having to try to search and find it as you come upon things. And what's really great is because you guys are at Hal Leonard are always releasing new stuff. And so when new stuff populates into my search, I can go, oh, I love that, and throw it into that playlist, and I won't forget about it because there's there's so many good things. Um, so yeah, now that this is up, like I would want this, this is really cute. The bird's trying to sing her favorite tune. Can you follow her as she flies from branch to branch to find her pitches, see the clues? And it's talking about a step up, a skip up. Like that is a great little worksheet um, to assign for my kids. So I'm gonna plus, and I'm gonna add that to that grade three to five pitch, boom. Okay, so I've got a couple worksheets in there. I know there's more that I could add, but for the sake of like doing this, we'll 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 stop there. I'm not gonna like fill it with absolutely everything possible, okay? Um, okay, so we did interactives, we did PDFs. Let's see, okay. Are there any books I might wanna add in? So I'm gonna come to the books and I'm gonna see what's in here. There's beatboxing. You know, there's piano, there's guitar. You can look at the book, you can add it to a playlist. Again, you can't assign one page of the book, but assign the book and tell the kids to go to page, blah, 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 blah. Um, you know, that's very easy. For this, I'm definitely wanna go do some boom whackers with them as we're doing pitch. I'm gonna add that because I know for sure we're gonna do that as part of that um, unit. So I'm gonna add that book to that playlist. <clears throat> because then as I go build out specific lessons, I can pull and add that variety of the content to it as I as I go. I can play with, oh, well, I want to start with um, a song, and then I want to go into a worksheet, and then I want to go into a video, and then I want to get them up moving, you know, and you can make an interactive thing to set it. So I can kind of get that sequential scaffolding of the concept within the lessons just pulling from that playlist. I can make that order within it. So we'll go back and kind of do that afterwards. All right, so we did some books. Um, let's go into, um, let's see, there's also some great, I'm gonna go to resources, um, the listening maps. And, and after see. that, we'd love to see some, just from the questions, I'd love to see some songs and separating by song assets where a yeah. teaching plan and a video and all of that, that would be next. Yep, that will absolutely be next. So, John, what do you think? Which song should, which uh, listening map should I add for three to five pitch? I'm thinking maybe Canon and D. That can that can work for me. Um, yeah, I think that's probably the best. Maybe the Brahms yeah. would be good as well. I'm a huge Brahms might be good, or even fan. Star Wars if you're talking about intervals at all. The it's Star like Wars that. listening map, I can yeah. just tell you, is the most used, one of the most used things on really? the site. It's a very popular one for sure. Well, because the kids, I'm sure they're going to connect with it right away. So, all right, let's add the Star Wars one. Um, and again, if I were doing this, let's let's launch it because I would launch it. So I should launch it to show you. Um, and then it's talking about themes, the rebel theme, which instruments. Oh, this is totally great. Um, and you could get into, you could see, here's where I'm going to say this, guys. We have this listening map. Let's listen to the song. Then maybe go find, go do a YouTube search or a Google search and see if you can find the music written out for theme one or the rebel theme. And maybe you have them play on ORF instruments or you have them get out boom whackers and you learn how to play it. Maybe they then go back, you do the listening map again and the kids play along. It's that like, it's not the be all end all. You you use it and then you pull in other things to support it and then you come back to it. And this is just a great structural foundation to really round out and pull your kids in. Um, I'm loving these ideas I'm having. I wanna teach this, this unit, John. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna go grade three to five pitch, add it to that playlist. So now I've got that listening map on there, okay? All right, let's go to songs, friends. Let's get there. So we've got options here, and this can be overwhelming because 
475 songs are here. So where do I start? I always start with some form of a filter, okay? Um, so maybe I know what song I want, maybe I don't. Well, I know I want some songs. Um, you know, there are grade ranges that I could add in. But, you know, I got to be honest with you. I will pull three songs that are three to third to fifth grade with my K-1 sometime because the concept I'm trying to teach is in that song. Maybe they can't really sing really well with it, but I want them moving or I want them doing something. Maybe you want to revisit a song that's labeled K-1 and have your, because it's one they're learning with their recorder that they can play along. You know, so I don't like to limit thinking grade range of, oh, I can only do third to fifth grade because I'm teaching third to fifth grade. There's lots of possibilities. You can do language, season, holiday. We're gonna go to song assets though. Now in song assets, I wanna pull in a song that has a teaching plan, okay? Or I want one with a video, which is gonna give you choreography or to kids. Um, maybe I want a PDF with the song. If I click PDF, it's gonna give me all the songs that have some form of a PDF to go with. So let's look at the mannequin, because that's a great song. Um, so that PDF is the piano accompaniment, okay? Um, so uh, also, I'm gonna teach you a trick because, oh, it, it did it, I'm okay. Um, that John and I were talking about the other day, actually, uh, and he taught me a trick, and I'm gonna teach you guys the trick. And somebody uh, so just asked this question, and I'm typing the answer, and you're telling it right now. So, <laughs> Linda, watch, pay attention, Linda, here it comes. I'm gonna stop typing. Here it is. This was life changing my friends you're gonna think it's because when i just click to open that when i went back it gets rid of my filter there's a there's a little um hack for this so i want something with a teaching plan okay so i'm gonna scroll through you know and find um what can i do for there let's see let's see i'm gonna get something quick um what she's gonna show works for many websites because depending on how you sort and filter things on a page you notice we're not using urls and changing the url for every filter so the back button doesn't save the different filters but but tab, ready tab, tab, i'm just tab, gonna tab, grab tab. i'm just gonna grab one anyone for you guys for the for the sake of it um and let's say because i'm not seeing the one i want so um and i'm gonna ready right click on view song if you're a Mac person, control click, because I'm a Mac girl, um, new tab. Boom, I didn't lose my filtered list, and now I've got the snail and the mouse on a new tab. That is what we want, friends, right? That, there it is. So, so exciting, yay. All right, yeah, I'm a, so that's I'm a all tabber for a lot of things. I will tell you that in, in what I do, and it, it works on other softwares too, is I will open a bunch of things from one list in all new tabs. And then what helps me, to be honest, is a process point, is I will have like 10 tabs, open, just 10, 12 tabs there of all the things I've opened. And then I'll go look at them and I'll even order my tabs left to right, of maybe the order of playlists, get it down to exactly what I want. Maybe you open a song, but then in that window, you in that tab, you decide that you want that song to be just the video. Get it all what you want. And then I'll just go left to right and add it all to a playlist. But I'll sort of build my playlist in tabs so I can get a sense of the flow. And then I'll just go tab to tab, add to playlist, close the tab. Um, well, it helps me visualize what the steps would be. So I've been doing that with my kids. I had, so, in, I mean, I have the playlist there, but rather than have to take the time to load each song, I'll preload them by opening each song in a separate tab. So then I just have to click over to the next tab and it's loaded and I can just hit play. Um, so it saves a little bit of that loading time also if you're, um, when you're in the midst of teaching. Um, so Rocky Mountain is a great song that I love. This has a great, um, here's the lyric video um that you know will give you the lyrics along with it it's got the music notation so i'm going to add that it says three plus that's a great song for third grade pitch but you know i don't want to add i can add the whole thing maybe i only you know what i know i'm going to use music notation with the kids as um the foundationally so i'm going to add that but then maybe before they look at the pitches with um 
it with pitch, maybe I want them to just learn it with just the lyrics first um, so that they get used to just thinking about the words as they hear the song. You know, so you can add each asset separately. Maybe I'm going to want them to perform it with just the accompaniment, not the demo in the background. So I'm going to add that asset separately. Um, and again, you can always go back later, but I know that those are ones, those are the three I want. All right, I'm going to hit back because I forgot to open it in a new tab. Um, and I want to get, I know what, I really love this one. This is a newer one. All in. Here it is. Um, so let's view all in. Now this has a teaching plan. So I love that. I could have searched by teaching plan. And this, a teaching plan is not a lesson plan. It's not going to give you a 40 minute lesson plan. It's going to tell you a great way to teach this song. Um, it's a plan for teaching this one thing, okay? So there's video motions, play the song as a warm up, have them do the videos. So here's the lyric video, and you will. Um... So I know you could hear it because I've got my headphones in, but you can see you've got the girl dancing along that they can follow along with. Um, maybe you want them to learn how to sing it first, um, and maybe you want them to learn it with notation. So I'm going to add the notation and then I'm going to go separately add that lyric video because then later in the lesson I want to get them up and moving. They need a little break from sitting. I want them to move. I want to pull in that asset to the playlist. Okay. Um, and then that will, and if you want to be able to come back to the teaching plan, you'll want to add it the whole thing because that's where that's located. Okay. Um, another great one is Into the Unknown. Um, that would be a great for the pitch lesson. Now, here's what I also love. You can pull in those Disney songs. They're fabulous. I love that there are three versions of this song. There's a level one, a level two, and then a concert version. So I can go in here and decide which one best fits my kids in what situation. Um, so for third to fifth, maybe I want that level two of it. And there is, again, activity for the kids um, to – okay, that wasn't the one. Maybe the other level has, the, um, has a movement to go with it. Um, so I think I grabbed the wrong one. But regardless, I'm going to click the plus sign. I want to add all of the assets for Into the Unknown into that playlist um, to kind of go through later because I'm going to use different things. So I've added now a ton of stuff to this playlist. So let's go check this playlist out and see how it's kind of panning out. What have I got? I don't even remember because we've added so much. So right here I can see I've got 11 items, okay? So as I look here, I've got interactives, PDFs, books. I'm now going to manage that list because I can't do anything with this right now besides delete or open up stuff. Um, and so maybe I want to start with a song. So I want to start with Into the Unknown. I'm going to grab that. I'm going to put that at the top. Um, and that has all of the assets. Maybe then we're going to go to, um, uh, let's do, um, an activity page with find the music alphabet to bring back the letters of the alphabet. Then we're going to do, I'm going to have them do another song. We'll do Rocky Mountains. I want the lyrics first. Um, just looking at the lyrics. <clears throat> then I want them to do it with the notation. Let's talk about the notation. And then um, maybe in a future lesson, we're going to revisit it a couple times. We'll come back, so I'm going to leave the accompaniment down there. Then I want to do some boom whackers, um, and then we'll do the all in to finish up that class. Bam, six songs in order. So I was able to pull, even though these are the same song, I created this list. I could then share this playlist. And by the way, I know it says that it's valid through December 31st, 2020, which thankfully 2020 will be over sooner than we know it. Um, but I got word that they're going to be extending that, right, John? Is that true? 
Yeah, that is correct. So, you know, the, the links are good for a certain period, but they will they will be extended. So don't worry about, you know, losing any of your access. We'll send out a memo about all of that, but they will be extended again through, I think it's going to be June 30 or something like that. But we got your back. Don't worry. We do. All right. So I'm going to generate that share link. Boom. I can now copy that and paste it into Google Classroom, into Seesaw, into Canvas, into any, wherever. If you email your kids, if you post it in your Google site, your class website, I can post that to them. You want to send it to the substitute. You want to send it to, um, you know, whatever. I can now send this playlist off so that I am sharing it, that they can go through step by step. Now, what I don't suggest is necessarily sharing with the kids a link to all of the assets because they're going to get confused. That's where if this was for kids to share, I would just share the notation because bam, it's going to open up exactly what you want them to see. You don't have to say when you open the eye, you then need to click lyric video. No, just share the lyric video by itself. If you're going to send it to the kids, um, it just makes it easier. Um, and if I just wanted to share two of these, then I create a separate playlist for those two items. Um, and then I'm going to go back to playlists. Any other questions, John? I know I just kind of built that fast and pulled in all kinds of different stuff. No, I think this has been super, super, super helpful. I think just a uh... You know, a review here of just understanding that what we've learned tonight and what we've kind of seen in great detail is there are so many ways to organize content for the rest of the year. And it seems like the overall theme is, you know, have a build a structure of playlist and class collections of folders. Some folks have asked, can I, you know, have some for me and some from others? You can have as many playlists as you want. So, I mean, playlist and class collections can also be thought of as folders and folders of folders. A class collection is a folder of playlists and a playlist is a folder of individual, we'll call them assets. And you can organize these. So if I was planning the rest of my year, I would make my playlist and set the names and get all the ready to go. And then I would just go through the site, song by song, resource by resource, find all the things I wanna pull. Like you said, Shauna, don't even hesitate to put it in. It's, it's so easy to take out later. And yep. then really set yourself up for success all year long, right? And um, somebody asked a really good question about, you know, what percentage of your teaching are you using EMC versus other pieces? I think that's a really good, good, good question to ask as well. That's a great question. And like, it kind of depends. Um, but I would say, like right now, theme-based, I'm like doing Halloween and I would say 70% of my class is EEMC. Um, but then there's other days where I might lean on other things a little bit more. Um, so I know that that's, I'm kind of skating the question, but that's tough. I would say, honestly speaking, I would say at least 50 to 60% of what I do is coming from EEMC. Realistically, probably at this point this year, um, I, I would say that that's about right i love it so do us one more favor it's funny as soon as we start wrapping up the questions start pouring in that's cool Can you just one more time very slowly just maybe show how this how to add something to a playlist one more time maybe oh go grab a listening map add okay. that when you when the thing comes up show that you can make a new playlist right there and name it yep. and then go into that playlist and generate that share link and show people that you can copy it and what to do with that link. All right, so I went to resources. Um, that's your easiest way to get here to the listening maps. Um, oh, you know what I didn't show, John? Right, and then I'm gonna show how to add from the recorder class method. We forgot that, or the ukulele. I had said you could do it, but I didn't show them how to. Um, so let's do Maple Leaf. Um, actually, let's do Ride of the Valkyries. Um, and so I'm gonna hit that add to playlist <clears throat> that plus on the folder because you're putting it in the folder I'm going to drop down and I can add it to any one that I have here you'll see guys I've got a lot of playlists in here okay or I can add a new playlist all the way at the bottom enter that name and it's going to give me like the things I've done recently um, and then I would just hit create okay um, what I wanted to show that we totally let me go back to resources 
Let me pull up the ukulele class method because this is really cool. So you may not want to add everything. Um, you may go in and be like, oh, I want to talk about the parts of a ukulele with my kids when we're talking about instruments. I could totally use that as like the anatomy of a ukulele. So I'm going to hit the plus sign and that's going to let me add it to any playlist I want. So I'm going to put that in, um, in whatever playlist. I just drop it in or add a new one. Maybe I want to do, do I have one for instruments? I was starting. Oh, I have that in timbre, I think. Um, so you just drop it in and you can add that one picture. Uh, maybe uh, you want to add um, something. Maybe this Malaguena, maybe you want them to play it on recorder. Great. Maybe you want to do it as a sight singing exercise. You could pull in one of these songs for sight singing. You're not using it as them playing on the ukulele, they're just sight singing, looking at it. I mean, you really can utilize these things in any way you want um, to do. So that's one way to do that. But I would say it's definitely all about being organized. So like come up with what's your structure and then never be afraid to just add stuff because like I will tell you right now, I did not get to every song in this beat and rhythm playlist. I didn't get to brush your teeth. It's okay. It lives here. And someday if I feel like it, I'll pull it in and use it. Um, so I, I'm, I always live by the, it's better to have more than not enough. I always want to have my bag of tricks ready. Um, and right here next to this playlist, I can add it to a class collection. I want this to go to kindergarten. I'm going to add it to that class. I also, I'm going to go back to playlists. And I want to add, I also want to add it to first grade because I do that with first grade. So let me go add it to them. Grade one, add it to that class. So now this playlist is also in grade one that I could share out this class. I could build in all these playlists and put them in grade one, put them in kindergarten. And you can have them shared amongst different grade levels. Um, so it makes it really, really effective and easy. So my suggestion is create those playlists, get your think start. I know it's early, but start thinking spring semester. Or maybe you're going to take your winter break to do that. But think about how you're going to structure out the rest of your year. Make a class collection if you want to use it um, by unit, by grade level. However, you're going to, again, think organizationally. How are you going to organize these folders, these playlists? And then how do you want to pull these playlists together to create bigger things like by grade level? or um, by theme or, or you, uh, unit. Maybe, you know, you have your playlists are lesson one, lesson two, lesson three, and then the playlists come together to be a class collection of my unit on rhythm, my unit on pitch, my unit on um, timbre, however you do it. So set yourself up to have those ready to add new content as it becomes available. You can just toss them in. So that is, um, Definitely my hints for you and my tips and tricks. And hopefully you like that control click or right click to open um, the asset or the song up in a new tab so you don't lose your filter. That was, um, this will sound silly, but it was a little life changing. And I was super excited when John showed me that trick the other day. So was, so was my, my new BF Linda who I've been chatting with the whole time. So um shauna first of all just there's been more ideas here than we can keep up with which is really really <laughs> valuable and i think uh you know everyone who's on you will get the recording later uh you can watch it over and over and over again to check it out i can say that you know one uh, from how leonard's perspective and what we do with e music class is we are working fast and furiously um and and you know through through COVID and all the other challenges that we all have where we're all facing challenges we're doing everything we can to provide content that works for online learning, in-person learning, in-person learning on Tuesday that has to go online on Wednesday, that's gonna go back hybrid in January. No, we're not going hybrid. Wait, we're going hybrid. Wait, we're doing this. Wait, print packets for students. No, don't print packets for students. Well, you can't go online, but they can't, right? We know this world. We are adapting and pivoting and evolving just as fast as you are. We're doing everything we can. So as we add content, we're making more content interactive, but the real, you know, one of the needs we had was you know the ability to plan the rest of your year with all these resources 
and you know i called shauna i think saturday or sunday we said let's let's do a <laughs> webinar and we're quick on this we're fast yeah. we can we can provide you with as much pd as possible if anyone uh school your school or district is using ee music class and you want to do a training session email info at ee music class the contact us page on the website comes to the same place we are here to help like we authentically want to help you and you know we we understand there's so much more content we want to get in there there's so much more we want to add and we are getting out as fast as possible but it, it, as we do that there's also so much in here and we want to provide help and resources to music teachers at the end of the day this is about educating more students with more technology and we're really excited to have this platform and this is still only the tip of the iceberg of what we're we're planning here um and i mean that's so exciting it's so exciting i have to tell you like this is my this was like game changer for me for planning concerts because everything i have I actually the other day when i was planning for this webinar i stumbled on an awesome boom whacker arrangement that i'm like oh, I, I made a note like that's going to be my winter concert next year i'm going to feature boom whackers from the boom and the basics book um so there's so much in here that's really good arrangements that you can't find anywhere else um that that are great for concert settings especially for younger kids because there's not a there's there's just not a lot else out there otherwise absolutely well shauna thank you so much thank you everyone for for watching whether the recorded version or live um, if you are watching live, you will get the recorded version an hour after I press stop, including a certificate of completion for this. So if you need PD hours, uh, you, will, you will get a certificate. We are always available through contacting us through the website or emailing info at eemusicclass.com. If you're on a free trial or if you're on a demo, um, one thing I will be happy to announce now that you'll hear about very soon is we are going to offer a special, you know, kind of COVID year only um, half year subscription. We know a lot of people are still demoing the product and are looking to add it. And I know it's the middle of the year. So we will be announcing very soon the ability to purchase a six month, half year, half price subscription. Uh, that'll be available starting December 1st and you'll be able to purchase a six month. So if you're looking at using this for all of the spring, we're gonna have an option for you that is, is easier on the budget so you can purchase for just the spring and then you can uh, obviously purchase for the full year later. So look for that option. We're always here to help you. Thank you, everyone. Stay safe, wash your hands, uh, wear a mask. And, wear a mask. And, and again, you know, we just appreciate everyone who is still taking time to learn new technology and new ways to engage kids now more than ever, which is so important. So thank you for taking the time to want to learn something new for the betterment of music education. So thank you all. Have a wonderful evening. Thanks, everybody.